Hi, welcome to Sabbath School Daily, where we have been studying from this lesson right here, God's Mission, My Mission. This week we're studying from lesson number nine, which has the title, Mission to the Powerful, and today is Wednesday's lesson, which has the title, Mission to the Rich. Today's lesson revolves around a story that is found in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 through 22. Look at what it says, Matthew 19, 16 through 22, that says, And behold, a man came up to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. And he said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. And when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now this is one of those sad stories that we find in the Bible where we don't really have a happy ending at the end of the story. In this case, this man who was seeking the kingdom, he was looking for truth, he was looking for salvation. And it's interesting that he was, because in his case, we know a few details. He had put God's commandments into practice since his childhood, and yet he felt lost. And the reason, friends, is because we can't be saved by what we do. We can't be saved by actions, by good deeds. And Jesus makes that crystal clear because the commandments that he mentions are all part of the Ten Commandments. They are all good deeds. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not bear false witness, and so on and so forth. And all of these this young man had kept. And so what did he lack? He lacked a relationship with God. He lacked closeness to him. And that reflected in his love for his treasures, for his money. You see, he loved his money more than he loved God. Instead of good deeds, instead of keeping the commandments, we need to know God. We need to follow him and give up anything that comes between us and him. That was this young man's problem. Now, I'm not saying that it's not important to keep the commandments. It's not important to not kill, not steal, not commit adultery, not lie, and so on. Of course, those things are important. But we are being extremely unfair to the law of God when we demand that it save us. You see, the law was never given for salvation. God's law is given as a demonstrative that we are already saved. And that's truly a conversation for another time. Uh, perhaps if you go back to the lesson on Ephesians, there are several videos where we talk about the same reality, especially Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10, that gives us the formula of salvation, which is grace through faith for good works. And so here we see that this young man, he's doing good works, expecting to be saved. And when Jesus makes it clear that he couldn't be saved through his good works, and that instead he had to surrender what he loved the most, which in this case were his treasures, and follow Christ, well, that became too difficult. You see, it's easy to do good deeds. That's the easy part. The hard part is to have a relationship. It's to know God, to love him, and to surrender our life to him, to surrender control to him. That's the difficult part. Now, the counterpoint to this story that is provided here in today's lesson is one of my favorite stories in the New Testament, and it's the story of Zacchaeus. And we find that story here in Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. Look at what it says. He entered Jericho and was passing through, and there was a man named Zacchaeus, and he was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was small of stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be with the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. I hope that you see what's going on in this story. Salvation hasn't entered Zacchaeus' house because he's giving away to the poor. Again, that's a demonstrative. He is being saved, or salvation is entering his home because he too is a son of Abraham. Now, who was Abraham? He was God's friend. He is the father of the Jews, as they themselves would say. Here we see that Zacchaeus, he took away, he removed 
The biggest obstacle in his life, the biggest perhaps identifying factor of who he was, he cast it aside and surrendered it to God. And in doing so, he became a son of God. He became Jesus' friend. That's what we need to understand in these stories. It's not the riches, the money, the power that are truly the problem. It's the love that people have for that. And let me tell you something. It's not a problem that only rich people have. You see, you can be poor or rich and still love money. I have known very poor people who love money just as much as the greediest rich person that you know ever walked this earth. It's not really a matter of having the money or not, it's a matter of how much it is loved, how much it's pursued, and how much it occupies the mind and the priorities of that person. Now it becomes more difficult for the rich and the powerful because they already have it and they want more and they want to accumulate it and protect it and that becomes truly a lifestyle. However, here in the story we see that it doesn't have to be that way. In this story we see Zacchaeus Opposed to the rich young ruler, we see that he surrendered and he became a friend of God. I hope that that is your case and my case. Perhaps you're not in the same situation of wealth as these two men. I know that I'm not, but it's always important to surrender anything that might come between us and our relationship with God. Please remember to study your lesson. It's a beautiful lesson this week, full of good lessons to be learned and to be implemented in our life. Also remember to comment down below with any questions or any comments. I'd love to interact with you. And please remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to our videos. We release one every day. And I hope to see you again here tomorrow for another Sabbath School Daily.